Yo, what's up, everybody? Since you guys all know it is tax season, I want you guys to know that today's sponsor is brought to you by Magnolia Tax Services. If you're a business owner or a high-earning individual, take control of your finances with the tailored tax planning services of Magnolia Tax Services. Their team of certified public accounts and enrolled agents specializes in maximizing savings for individuals and businesses by utilizing the latest tax laws and strategies. From complex business structures to high net worth individuals, they'll develop a customized plan to minimize your tax liability and increase your bottom line. Don't leave money on the table. Contact our partners at Magnolia Tax Services today for a consultation and get a $100 credit towards your service by clicking the link in the show notes. That's right, guys. Like I said in the beginning, it is tax season, so you want to make sure you tap in with my guys at Magnolia Tax Service today. And once again, that link is in the show notes. And now we'll get right into the show. Gotta get your brain right if you're trying to make a million dollars If you ain't gonna do it for yourself, then do it for your mama Only stay surrounded by them people if you know they solid Elevate your hustle up today to double up your profit Trying to learn some game, Xavier y'all gonna talk about it No Deanna, speak that shit that everybody voucher Ain't no more excuses valid, get up off the couch and get up in your bag To your bank account, need an accountant Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? Welcome back to the greatest show on earth, the Millionaire Mindsets Podcast. I am your host, Xavier, and today I got another legendary episode on the way, so make sure y'all tap in and stay tuned to this one, because this one's about to go crazy. But before we start, I would like to advise all the listeners, all the watchers, to please subscribe, leave that five-star rating, review, share, like, comment, do all those things. We're trying to run those numbers up, so if y'all could do that, we would greatly appreciate it. And getting right to the show, so today... I got a very, very special guest, man. It's just, I was telling him uh, before we started, I said, I gotta, I'm going to tell you the story on how I found out about you, but I want to tell him while we was record, recording. So a couple of months ago, I got a uh, family member, one of my closest cousins. He's like a brother to me. He moved to Dallas, and um, he was telling me about some of the things he's been doing. He's like, yeah, I'm starting my Amazon automation, blah, blah, blah. Nice. And I'm like, who you who you, um, who you, you learning from? He's like, it's this guy named Will. Do you know who he is? I'm like... No, I don't know, bro. I'm like, show, show, show me his account. So he showed me his account. He like, this guy. He's like, I was like, what's the um? Is it like he you you teaching you learning? He was like, yeah, no, nah, he the truth. Like he really gave me yeah. value in a lot of game. I said, man, that's so. I said, man, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta tap in with this guy, man. But come to find out, we already followed each other on Twitter, and I didn't even know it. Right, right. So we, so when we start talking. I'm like, oh yeah, let's get it done. Say less, bro. So I'm glad to have him here. His name is Will Rivera. Welcome to the show, bro. Hey, man, I appreciate you, man. I'm happy to be here. Like, yeah. it's, it's dope to be here, and congrats on having your daughter, too, thank, one thank, said it on the show. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, bro. I really appreciate that, man. So getting right into it, man, for the people this who may, they might be under a rock, bro. This might be their first time seeing you or hearing yeah. you. They ain't paying attention to what's going on. Give some brief background on yourself. Man, so brief background. Um, I like to start it off like, you know, I grew up not with the with the best childhood, um, I actually caught a felony when I was 17 years old. Okay. Um, just doing stuff, hanging around people I shouldn't have been hanging around. But I was able to go from, you know, a felon at 17 to a multimillionaire at 23, 23 simply by selling products online. Um, I didn't, you know, I didn't have a mentor early on. I didn't have, like, you know, I wasn't, you know, cheating the system or anything like that. It was simply be just from researching online. And what's crazy is I used to work at an Amazon warehouse. So I used to work from 6 p.m. to 4 a.m. at an Amazon warehouse making like $11 an hour. <laughs> and then uh, eventually while working there, I was like, you know what? I don't want to be in my 20s with lower, like a lower back problem. So I was like, let me, let me find something else that I can do. Um, so through just doing research online, I got put into that algorithm. You know, I started seeing ads about how to make money online. Um, I tried everything, you know, like flipping phones, like iPhones on eBay, stocks, crypto, like you know, I went through the whole like rabbit hole of just every hustle you can think of. Mm -hmm. And e-commerce kind of stuck with me because I saw an ad of someone talking about drop shipping and how you could sell products online without having to hold right. any inventory. Right. <laughs> yep. So that like it resonated yeah. with me because I didn't have a lot of money at the time. So I was like, wow, if I can sell something before I have to like buy it myself, if I could leverage the customer's money, I could see myself working my way up and like making a lot of money. So that's what I first started out with. I actually, you know, left my Amazon job and got a lower paying job at LA Fitness just so I could have more time. Really? Yes. Yeah, so I went from pay getting paid $11 an hour, but instead of working from 6 p.m. to 4 a.m., now I'm only working from 10 to 4, but I'm only getting paid $7 an hour, like minimum wage, 7.25. 
but I took that pay cut so I could have more time to watching YouTube videos and, and just, you know, putting all my time into my e-commerce business. And like a year went by, I didn't make any money, but I remember one day being at LA Fitness, I was working the front desk and I get that cha-ching, that Shopify notification. I had just made $10 and I'm like, That's yo. everything. And that day is when my life changed. Cause I was like, if I, if I can make one sale, I can make 10. And when I can make 10, I can make a hundred. That's just how, how I thought at the time. And that's mm-hmm. literally what happened. You know, I got my first sale a week later, started getting like 10 sales a day, hundred sales a day, you know, just started going crazy. And throughout this whole process, I was documenting it all on social media. And I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what like caused me to document it. I guess it's just like a God, a God thing. Yeah. But uh, I was documenting the whole process and I was kind of like the only person in my county that was doing something like entrepreneurial and online like that. So a lot of people, they started hitting me up to teach them. So I started teaching people in my local area and I kind of blew up like locally. Um, No course, no nothing like that. Just literally just teaching people in person. And I used to, uh, it's crazy because I dropped out of my college that I was going to, but I used to still pull up and I used to pack the conference rooms teaching people about e-commerce. But as a dropout, still that's utilizing, crazy. still utilizing all the resources. So um, yeah, man, that's how I started. And then you know, I, I got into Amazon FBA later, just because I realized that that was a more scalable and sustainable type of business rather than drop shipping. And uh, you know, I started going crazy there too, just opening up wholesale accounts with big name brands like Sony, Logitech, Fiji, buying their products in bulk at a wholesale cost, and then reselling them on Amazon. And yeah, that's you know, to summarize it, that's pretty much what I did to, to oh, get to where I'm at. Dog, we got a lot. We got a lot to cover, man. But I wanted something you said that really stuck out to me because this is something I was having a con- I, I was having a conversation about this with somebody recently. And you talked about documenting. I told somebody, I was talking to an older gentleman. I said one of the biggest regrets I have in my life when I'm only 20, 29 is that I didn't document my, like, late teens, yeah. like, my come up. I didn't really document it. I was in the military. I joined the military at 21. Yeah. I didn't, I should have, what I should have been doing is document everything. Cause if I had all the footage of mm-hmm. how me at 20, 21 to where I am now, that money is worth, and you can't put no limit on that. So yeah. I tell people all the time, especially younger people, I was like, I don't give a damn if you work at Arby's, you're not, you're not going to always be there. Document that process. You don't got to post it, but yeah. you could just document it. So if you do come up, it's that social proof. It's that proof of concept that people can see all that. All the footage you got that you documented, bro, 20 years from now, 30 years, that's, that's documentaries. That's all kinds of, bro. That's and facts. That, that's, that's, you know what I'm saying? That's uh content. Content is king, bro. So that's, so I salute you for having a foresight to know, like, I need to document all these things, even though I'm not nowhere where I, I think I should be or plan mm-hmm. on being. Yeah, it's crazy. It's just, you know, even from the very beginning, I just had a lot of confidence to where it was like, let me document this because I know I'm about to come on. <laughs> so it's like I was just thinking five years ahead, like, I'm going to need this later. So that's really why I was documenting everything. And yet yeah, now it's, you know, I've gone viral just because I have pictures from when I worked at Amazon. And then it's like now I have pictures standing in front of my like apartment building. I bought an apartment building in Conyers, Georgia. So it's like just having like that before and after is crazy. That's everything. So yeah. talk about, you said you started, you started selling stuff. So how did you... How did you um, identify what you wanted to sell when you got into e-com? Yeah, so, you know, man, I probably watched every YouTube video on e-commerce that's that's, that's on YouTube. Um, so, like, I would spend literally hours every single day just watching every video on product research and all, all this, all this like, things about e-commerce. And I realized that, you know, Instagram is an algorithm, right? So, if, if you like cars, you're going to see cars on Instagram. If you like girls, you're going to see a lot of girls, girls on your Instagram, right? So I basically figured out how to manipulate the algorithm to show me products that are trending. So what I started doing is I would go on IG and anytime I saw an ad of a product, I would like it and I would comment like, I'm going to order this or I just ordered this, even though it's something that I didn't like or if I didn't order it. And I would just do that every time I would get on IG. So I was liking and commenting on like 50 ads a day to the point where now every time I get on Instagram, all I'm seeing is products. All I'm seeing is you know, things that are going viral because Instagram sees me as a customer. They see me as an engaged shopper. Like I'm under that, that category now. So now every time I go on the social media app, instead of it just being something that consumes my time, I'm actually utilizing it as a free product research tool where I go on it and I know what's working, what's not working because an ad will pop up. I can go to the comments and I can see that, oh, 30 minutes ago, all of these people are commenting that they just ordered this product. This 
product is selling. So that's actually how I found my first winning product. It was this bracelet and it was just going viral. I saw the ad and, you know, I tell people when you want to make money online, don't try to sell something crazy or revolutionary, sell what people are already selling, like sell what already works because there will never be a time where there are more sellers than buyers. You know, you walk no. in, you walk into Walmart and you go down the water aisle, you got Fiji, Dasani, Aquafina, Essential. Um, there's a bunch of water brands and, and why can they all make money? Because the consumers will always outnumber the producers. And it's the same thing with selling products online. So I saw someone successfully selling this bracelet. It's called a distance bracelet. So it's like a white beaded bracelet with one I black bead. Before, yeah. yeah, it's like a couple's product. Mm -hmm. um, I would never buy it myself. But <laughs> what I tell people is, you know, you're supposed to sell what the masses are buying. Not really what you like in exactly. the beginning, especially if you just care about making money exactly. in the beginning, right? Exactly. So I started selling that product and, you know, I started making like $100 a day. Eventually got to $1,000 a day. This is just one product. And I made my first six figures profit at the age of 19, just selling Whoa. that one product. Whoa. And then I just started rolling over that, that profit into like other products. And then that eventually, you know, was the capital that I used to start my Amazon FBA business. Mm. Yeah, so. So, okay. So you didn't even have the Amazon FBA. No, nah, I didn't there. even from, from 2018 to like 2020 from, yeah, from 2018 to 2020, all I did was drop ship. Like I was Shopify drop shipping. So selling products online that I didn't really own. People would buy from me. I would take their, their money and then I would go get it from my plug, my supplier, and my supplier would ship it directly to my customer. So there's a great business model that you can use if you're, if you're watching this. If you don't have a lot of capital, um, you could start a drop shipping business where you can actually leverage your customer's money to fund all of your orders. Now, if you do have some capital, um, this is way easier. This is what I do now. And I do it for a lot of like clients too, where... All we do is we open up wholesale accounts with big name brands. So I got into this in like 2021, like mid COVID. Um, I figured out that I can take the money that I now have. And instead of, you know, trying to make an amazing ad creative or be good at marketing or try to find a trendy product all the time, I can sell products that people already love and trust. And I can sell it on the number one e-commerce marketplace in the world, which is Amazon, right? Um, now I don't have to scroll through Instagram and try to find something that's going viral. I can just sell Fiji water because regardless what month it is, what day it is, people are buying that product every day on Amazon. Absolutely. It's the same thing with like toilet paper, just regular products. So, um, yeah, I teach people now how they can open up wholesale accounts with these big brands and then just buy them in bulk and then sell them on Amazon and doing, doing it through the FBA, um, system, which basically means if I order a thousand water bottles from Fiji. Fiji's not shipping me a thousand water bottles. They're shipping it to Amazon's warehouse. Every time that I get an order, Amazon is shipping it directly to the customer. They take a cut and then I get paid you out. Get pay, yeah. So it still pans off and uh, you're just utilizing your capital to buy these big name brand products. Man, it's so wonderful how technology and, and, <laughs> and brands has advanced so much that it could, it's, it's just, it's just unbelievable, bro. Like it's really, um, I hate to say it. No, fuck it. I don't hate to say it. It's, you really got no excuse to, um, to I would say, be broke. Yeah, no, what's crazy is my 15-year-old brother, he's 15, doesn't even have a driver's license yet. He makes $5,000 a month selling products on Amazon. Um, and because, like you said, there's no excuses. You can literally go to Costco or Sam's Club if you don't want to open up a wholesale account. Let's say you don't have that much capital. You can literally go to Costco or Sam's Club with the money that you have in your bank account whatever it is, and you can buy just what you can afford and you can resell those products that are in Costco or Sam's Club on Amazon. So my brother, he goes to Costco and he buys this Premier Protein product. It's a popular protein brand. And he buys them for like $30 in Costco per case and they sell for $50 plus on Amazon. And he's just selling that like so, clockwork at yeah. 15, you know, just flipping the bread that he has. Man, that's, that's, <laughs> what, that's what, you could get to it. Anybody that's listening to this watching it, you just gave out a lot of value right off top and within 10, 15 minutes of this conversation. But let me ask you this. Like you did that, that first 100K profit at 19. Yeah. Was you still at uh, you, which, your gym you said you was working at? I was working at LA Fitness. LA Fitness. Were you so still now at? what's crazy is when I made my first $10, I quit my job. <laughs> yeah. <Whoa. laughs> hey, so that's all I need. I yeah, know. When, I made, when I made my first sale online, I quit my job because Same day. all I needed was that proof yeah. of concept yeah. to let me know that I wasn't crazy in pursuing this dream. But when I made that first $10, I was like, all right, bet. Like, I'm not crazy. Like, this shit actually works. 
and I went all in. I immediately went all in. Um, I took the money that I was making online and I started investing. It's crazy. I was watching this one guy on YouTube. He had like 2,000 subs. Like it wasn't even big at the time. But I reached out to him and I was like, yo, how much for like a call? Because I, I, I need to do this Facebook ad thing. I don't know how to run Facebook ads. I need you to teach me. And he charged me like $100 for a call and I learned Facebook ads in one hour. Now this guy has like hundreds of thousands of subscribers on YouTube. Like he blew up. But yeah. But at the time he was small, so he was able to like give me the time of day for, for a call and stuff. And that that call changed everything for me because he had way more knowledge than me at the time. And now I was able to go from like making only ten dollars a day to a hundred, then to a thousand. Dog. Yeah. You was giving if people were really paying attention for real, no bullshit. You giving out so much game right now. Cause I literally was just talking about how and somebody messaged me, they was like, Man, you need to do an episode on how to network. And to me, networking is common sense, but to a lot of people, it's not. And what you just said, pretty much what you just did, is the key to networking. I feel like so many people, yeah. if they wanted to reach out to that guy, they would say, hey, man, can I pick your brain? Like, not give him any value. They want yeah, all this nah. value, but in exchange for nothing. But you all said, yo, I want to talk to you. I'm willing to pay you X amount of dollars off top. Once you have a conversation like that, the person that you want to connect with is more prone to having a conversation with you. But if it's all just like, give me, give me, give me, give me, it's right. like, dude, get the hell, get your ass on. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's, bro, that's heavy, bro. Because you understood that early on, like, I got to give him some value if I want him mm -hmm. to give me some value. Yeah, and I understood uh, ROI, too, at a young age. I feel like a lot of people, they let the cost of, in, of an investment stop them from, from making it instead of like the actual ROI. And like, I always, I always tell people this, like, um, you know, if I, if I offered you to buy my Lambo for 10 K, would you do it? Absolutely. And yeah. And the thing is, it's because you understand ROI. <laughs> yeah. You understand that if you buy it, you could resell it for 300,000 plus whatever. But there mm -hmm. are people that are watching this that wouldn't do it because they just see 10 K as a huge number. And that's preventing you from a lot of growth in life. Because if you think that way, you're gonna let you're you're gonna pass by a lot of opportunities that could excel you to like the next level. It's like I was talking to my friend the other day too, um, because I had just joined this mastermind, and I was telling him I was like, bro, you need to get into this mastermind with me. Like the people in here are like crazy dope entrepreneurs. Like the networking's crazy, can get you to the next level, etc. And then you know he was kind of he kind of wasn't convinced. He was like, you know what, bro, I want to make this amount of money before I before I get into that that mastermind. And then I told him, like, you really got to change the way you think because, you know, a lot of people, they won't get into a group or a mastermind or a course, or whatever, until they convince themselves that they reach a certain level. When, in fact, you should be investing into it to reach that level. <laughs> Why wait to reach that level to then get in? Right. The whole point of that product is to get you to that next level, right? So it's just, you know, it's just funny. <laughs> no, that's hilarious because it's so true, man. And it, it, like man, you touched you 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 touching on a lot of things. I want to go back to something else you said, and it was the proof of concept. I think a lot of people think that the big check is what changed your life. And I try to say I say this all the time. I say, bro, it's the small checks because, like you said, the small checks give you that proof of concept. Like the first time I made money podcasting, it was a fifty dollar check, mm -hmm. and when I got that, you would have thought it was a five hundred thousand dollar check yeah. because that told me like, oh, I, okay, I, this yeah. this 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 lets me know what's in store for me, what I can do with this. So you don't need, well, that's the, that's why it's the power of important of starting something because when you start, the quicker you start, the quicker you could get that small check and that small check is going to give you that confidence that like, oh shit, it's up now. Yeah, yeah. A lot of you guys just need to start because those small results that you get, those small footsteps that you take forward, that's going to lead to the huge growth the huge later one. in the future. But you just got to be exposed to it at some point in your life. That's why I'm so big on like, when I go on trips and stuff, I like to take my little brothers. I like to take my family. Like, I like to, to expose, expose them. them to, like, what's possible. You know, nice hotels, big houses, nice cars. Because I feel like the, the younger you are when you're exposed to things like that, the, more you're, you're, the earlier your mind starts to work. And you're able to attain those things maybe earlier than I did, I you know, for him. I so I think that's important, just being exposed to, Expo to things like exposure that. Exposure is everything. What... um. Going back to the, to, to the e-commerce, so you say you you left immediately. You made that uh, that ten dollars. You got up out of there. Yeah. And then, so let me ask you this: Did you have a brand at this time, like a big brand? No, like a personal brand. Yeah, personal brand. No, I was documenting everything, but my personal brand was small. Okay, so 
How long did it take you from when you started this to like grow your brand? Like, because you got a huge brand now. Yeah, it's crazy because it was kind of exponential. So at the time that I, I had already made my first 100,000, I probably had 2,000 followers. Crazy. I was still kind of just people in my local area knew about mm -hmm. me. Um, from 2018 to 2020, I grew to like 10,000 followers just from posting, just being aggressive on social media, posting <laughs> three times a day, just right. organic, going crazy. And um, then from 2021 to 2022, I went from 10,000 to like 500,000 followers. And all that was, was just paid traffic. You know, I started getting into Facebook ads, mm -hmm. Instagram ads, started getting onto podcasts because I think what people don't realize, and this would be a gem for anyone that has like some type of value to give, or, you know, you, you're on social right now, is a lot of people think that they need to constantly make viral content rather than taking their content that's already good and just paying for it to go viral. <laughs> Talk to break it down, bro. Like, that's the quickest. <laughs> that's that's, that's, that's right. the quickest way for it to grow. Cause I used to, I remember just being frustrated at five thousand followers. Like, man, I know my content you know, is dope. better than anyone's content <laughs> in the space. Like, why isn't it blowing up? And it's because you just don't have that many eyes right now. And you're at the you're at the mercy of the algorithm. Like if yep. the algorithm wants you to blow up, you're going to blow, blow up. up. If it doesn't, you're not. And that doesn't really mean that your video is trash. It just means it just didn't hit the algorithm. <laughs> yep. So if you know you have a good video, especially if you post it and the algorithm does bless you and it does do good, if you run ads to it, you're going to 10x. So if you post a video and it does a million views organically, you're crazy if you don't run ads to that video because you're going to do 10 mil. You might do 100 mil. You know, like if you put money behind it. So that's that's just the way. That's hey, how man, I grew. You get you giving us a game. They, they don't even know how much this is worth because this is this is the stuff you saying is stuff that people charge for and they be secretive about. And you just gave it to them for free. Not yet. Facts like um, in 2020, I started my program, Ecom Degree University. Right. So I was blowing up. Like in my local area, I was teaching everyone how to get into e-commerce because I was documenting. My high school friends were seeing it. College friends were seeing it. And it got to a point where I couldn't help everyone one-on-one. -on -one. Exactly. So I told myself, let me just start a program. And this was back when courses weren't popular. You know, now a lot of people have courses Everybody and stuff. Um, I didn't even know that you can make a lot of money with a course. I thought, you know, let me drop this. And if I make $10,000, i am i am good. Like, that's a lot of money to me at the time. So I dropped it. And I was making good money. I didn't really see it as like a main income or anything like that. Like money was coming in consistently. I was only charging people like $200 to learn. Um, and then eventually I started getting into like these different rooms and I'm hearing people like, yeah, I made a million dollars last year with my program or I made 500,000 this month with, with my program. <laughs> I'm like, yo, what? <laughs> that course would be different. Exactly. And that got me thinking like I need to blow up my personal brand. Because the e-commerce money is good, but, you know, I'm trying to do big stuff. I'm trying to buy apartment buildings. Like, I need money coming in from everywhere. And if I can help people and make money along the way, then I don't see that as a bad thing, right? So that's when I started running ads, trying to teach people how to get into the game. Mm. And that's why I told you um, about running ads to, like, a popular video because I posted a video on social media. And it was a video, you might have seen it. It was an ad where I was like, don't buy this. Yep buy this. That was everywhere. And, yeah. And it was a, a Fiji water. And I was telling people how they can open up wholesale accounts with big brands, sell them on Amazon. That video blew up organically. Yeah, that's, that's so that I, video I everywhere. posted it. It got a million views organically. And I only had like 50K followers. So I was like, well, that's crazy. I took that video, ran it as an ad. And I think we spent like a million dollars on that video, just running it as an really? ad, just that one video. How, but how much it made you? But that video has made us over $10 million, just that one video. Just, just that one video. That's wild. And that video is still running as an ad. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> and I posted that like two years ago. My my ad team, they because when I had posted it, I was um I think I, I pointed at my watch and then above me it said learn how to build an online business in 2021 because that's when I posted it. So now my ad team every year they change they the change year. the year. And we're still running it though. That's <laughs> Yo, you giving, bro, like I said, you giving us so much value because oftentimes you'll talk to entrepreneurs or if they on social media and they like, man, I don't need the internet. Like, what's, I don't need to go viral. Yeah. I'll be like, man, y'all don't understand this shit. Like, not, I don't know how to explain this, but the more attention you get, 
the more money you're going to make. Yeah, and when you go viral, a million views. Two and it, mi- yeah, and it's not just because, you know, I know some people, they're like against the whole like course thing, but it's right. like, it's not even, it's not even getting eyes just to sell courses. You know, now I'm into real estate, commercial real estate. I have people that follow me that are, are willing to invest in my deals now. See? You know, I'll post something like, yo, I'm trying to buy this 80 unit apartment building in Atlanta. Here's my email if you're trying to invest with me, like and own some property. And people are DMing me ready to invest 50,000, 100,000, 200,000 just because they follow me on social media, just because we've built that connection and they see me as trustworthy, right? Yep. So it goes way beyond, way beyond just, that. Yep. you know, selling digital products. That's, that's facts, bro. And talk about we, we bringing up real estate. You lead me right into it, bro. I know you. it's a 24 or 26 unit. 24 unit. 24 unit. Talk about how was you able to acquire that? Yes. And, you t- and it's named after you. you re- right, yeah. We <laughs> renamed it Rivera Park. So mm-hmm. it's crazy. This is the same formula. Same same way that I got good at e-commerce and the same way that I made money there is how I made money in real estate. So I knew that while making money online is cool, you're going to have to pay a lot in taxes because you don't have that many write-offs when it comes to making money online. You got like ad spend and maybe your office and a Wi-Fi bill. But other than that, you're going to pay a lot. You're going to pay a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I learned my lesson. I paid a lot. So I was like, yeah, never oh, again. Um, <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I need to find a tax haven. And plus, I've always liked real estate. Um, and then I, I found someone in my city. His name's Ed Bolden. And he has 600 units in Atlanta, over 40 apartment buildings. I think it's over like 60 million in real estate. And I found him on IG. I was like, wow, he's in my city. And I DM'd him. Same way that I DM'd the, the guy that I was trying to learn Facebook ads from. And I was like, yo. You know, I'm trying to get into real estate. Um, I see you doing your thing. Like, I would love to learn, like, how much can I pay you just for you to teach me how to do this? Or do you have any anything that I can watch that you recommend? Like, you know, I just kept it real with him. He didn't respond. You know, month, months went by, and I DM'd him again. He didn't respond. And then months went by, and then one day one of my friends, he calls me. He was like, yo, Bolden, you know, he, he's doing this mastermind now. I just joined. It's, it's 50000 and then, you know, I joined. I was like, oh, bet. Boom. Got in the mastermind. He put me on game within like six months of being in there. I bought my first apartment building. Dope, bro. So, that's the, <laughs> That's two things. The power of the follow-up. Because most people, they're not even going to attempt to follow up. Even yeah. though he didn't hit back, it's still that you followed up. And the second thing, networking again. You was Exactly. Willing to, you and now me and him are cool. Like, me and him can go to a bar, grab a drink type of cool. You know, it's not just just off the, the just, mentorship. Bro, you... you, you t- you you giving you 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 giving too much value, bro. So at, uh, when you bought it, was it already like fully occupied? So yeah, when I bought it, it was about yeah like eighty percent okay. occupied. Um, it needed a lot of work though. A lot of the units were weren't looking good, needed paint. Um, a lot of the tenants weren't paying rent. So I bought the building at two point six million dollars. Um, as soon as I bought it, it got appraised at two point eight. So I made two hundred thousand buying it. Um, and then we put like 300K in renovations into it. And we're still renovating some units. But when we're done, the ARV is going to be around 3.8. So I'm trying to pull like a million dollars in uh, cash out refinance out of it. And that a million dollars is tax free for yep. anyone watching this because you can't get taxed on a, a loan amount. And so you make that a million tax free. But the, the key to this whole thing is I saved $700,000 in taxes buying that building. Mm. So not only did I make 200000 on the appraisal, and, and am I going to make a million on the cash out refinance, but I saved 700000 buying it. Because when, when it comes to buying commercial real estate, you can depreciate up to, I think, 36 years. So basically what, what that is, is um, you're, telling, you're telling the bank that, listen, or you're telling the IRS too, that in 36 years, it's going to cost me all of this money to fix all of these appliances and things like that. And instead of saving that amount in your taxes, year one, year two, year three, you can take those full 36 years and get all of those expenses and just save them in year one. So real estate number one tax deduction. Exactly. Exactly. And you can do that with residential too, but you can only do it up to like 26 years, I think. So commercial, you get an extra 10 that you can write off. But that's, 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 how how, how old are you again? 24. You're 24, bro. You own a 24 unit apartment building. Got a eight figure business. Yeah. You own the gym. Oh yeah. This is unprecedented. <laughs> he said he said, Oh yeah, he forgot. This is unprecedented territory, yeah, bro. I talk about that. Yeah, we gotta we oh, we about to talk about that, dog. Like this is unprecedented territory for a twenty four year old, man. So 
before I want to talk about the gym, the rich and fit. Like I, I love the name number one. So, so shout out to you for that. But talk about like your mindset to to be able to accomplish all these things at twenty four. Have a you just you say you became a felon. That was only seven years ago. So talk mm-hmm. about the mindset you have to accomplish all these things. I mean, I think it comes down to exposure. Like I said, none of this would be possible if I didn't have someone that I looked up to that was already doing what I aspire to do at a way higher level. So I got into e-commerce because I started looking up to people that were my age on YouTube that I didn't know, but that were living the dream life that I wanted to live. And because I had them as a mentor from afar, I was able to attain it eventually because it was in, it was in my line of view, like my line of vision. And it's the same thing with real estate. I, I had no experience in real estate whatsoever. I was strictly an e-commerce guy, but because I saw someone in my city killing it, putting his last name in front of apartment buildings, I was like, if he can do it, I can do it. I just need the guidance. And it's just, you know, being exposed to other people doing things, you realize that you can do it too. You know, anyone watching this can do what I've done way, even even more. You know, you just need the guidance and you need to, to have that exposure. That exposure. Man, that's that's heavy, bro. Let, let, let's talk about the um the gym for a second, Rich and Fit. Yeah. So when did you when did you start that and how what made you want to even get into fitness? Yeah, so that's crazy. So Rich and Fit, um how that started is I was on social media and I saw one of my friends, his name is Tyshawn. He has a podcast too. You might know him. They have the Hardly Initiated podcast. Oh Tyshawn, yeah, I know. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so those are my boys, and I saw them posting their story like them working out, but it was like HD 4K footage. And I just hear the trainer in the background, just like yelling at them, motivating them and stuff. And I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. Like that energy is crazy. Mm-hmm. And plus I'm big on content. So I was like, and I like working out too. So I, like, I need that content. Um, so I hit him up. I was like, yo, who's your trainer? And they let me know. And I was like, does he do the content too? Or is like, is there a videographer there? Like, how does it work? And they're like, nah, he's the trainer and he's the videographer. He does both. So he, he trains you, and then on the last set, he records it. That's and hard. So I was like, whoa, that's crazy. I was like, I need, to, I need to work out with y'all. So I started working out with them, and then I met the trainer. His name's Timmy. And we started getting, like, kicked out of gyms. So we started out th- at, at this one gym, and, like, he just started getting hella clients because I started posting the workouts. Tashawn and Ryan were posting the workouts. I had a couple friends pull up. They started posting, like, their workout footage. And it was just, like, contagious energy. Everyone wanted the content, too. So he started, like, packing out other people's gyms because he didn't own a gym. He would just work out at at different gyms. And it got to the point where we just started getting kicked out because, one, the energy was too high because he's he's really loud. And then it was just too many people. So we went from, like, we went through, like, four gyms. Got kicked out of every gym. And then it got to the point where um, my boy Benny... So he he actually is in real estate, too. He's one of my good friends. He's co-owner of Rich and Fit. Okay. I asked him one day. I was like, bro, we just need our own gym. Like, <laughs> we like I'm tired of getting kicked out of gyms. And, and Timmy, you know, he's he has way more energy than anyone that I've ever met in my life. <laughs> he has a crazy skill set of not only being, being able to train people, but being able to record as well. And just, you know, have an amazing video and amazing energy on the video. So... We should look into doing something if he's down to run it because I don't want to be the operator of the gym. I kind of just want to be the investor and also work out there, you know? (laughs) So, and then Timmy was down um, and immediately we just started working on it. You know, we hired an agent to find us a space. They found us a space in Chambly, which is like a growing area in Georgia. It's it's like 20 minutes from Atlanta. And then we just opened it up. We Mm -hmm. opened it up in a, or we, we signed the lease in November and then we finished renovations like, two months ago and we're not officially open yet we've we've been working out a lot of people there but um we officially opened on april 1st okay but it's, it's been smooth though yeah it, it, I've, been, I've been seeing the videos man y'all definitely been turned in there man but talk about why is um why is being physically fit important for you with involving everything else you were doing um i think i think being um like being successful in business and being fit in general, it comes with the same characteristics. Like you got to be disciplined. You got to come, come with it every single day. And you know, it's, it's literally the same formula. If you, if you can be fit, then you can be rich too. And that's why we called it rich and fit. And a lot of people, you know, although we are talking about the wealth side of rich, we're also talking about, you know, rich in the mind. So it's, it's called rich and fit because, 
you have to be rich in the mind before you ever become rich in your pockets. Like the, the mindset shift comes before the income shift. Yep. So that's why we named the gym Rich and Fit because odds are if you're fit, you probably make a lot of money too because you're a disciplined person. You're showing up every day. Same characteristics that it takes to be successful in business. So. Yeah, 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 bro, I, I, I agree wholeheartedly with that. And I want to go back to e-com for a second because this is an industry that, you know, a lot of people want to get in now. They're yeah. trying to venture into it. So what do you think is the, the, the biggest thing that for people to have unsuccessful e-com stores? Yeah. What do you think is the number one reason for that? I think the number one reason is that they're in a business that they shouldn't be in. And I'll explain what do you mean? it. Okay. I'll explain it. Okay. So a lot of people are in e-commerce because... They see it as a popular business model. They see it as a way that they can make a lot of money, but they suck at marketing. And you have to be good at marketing to have a successful online <laughs> brand, right? right. Okay. So that's, it's literally that simple. Um, now, there is a fix to that. You know, if you have a Shopify store right now, you're trying to sell a product that's not working, or you have a brand right now, you're trying to sell the brand, whether it's a clothing line or just any type of product you have, and it's not working, what I suggest is that you get into Amazon Wholesale first and get your money up. And Amazon Wholesale is the business model where I explain where instead of you creating a brand, instead of you creating a revolutionary product, you're partnering with an already well-known brand. I promise you it's way easier selling Fiji water than it is selling your brand water, whatever brand it Absolutely. is, right? <laughs> because Fiji already has the customer base. They already have millions of customers. And you can build up your capital partnering with them and selling their product on Amazon. And then you can use that money to then scale your brand. So I feel like a lot of people they're starting. The reason why they're not successful is because, you know, selling uh, like creating a brand from scratch and selling hard. it online is hard. It's one of the hardest things that you could do. So why not, you know, start here where you're already selling a well, like a successful brand. And then from what you learn here and from the money that you make here, then you can invest it into your own brand. Mm, so I think people are just, they're starting with the wrong hustle. Yeah, that, that's 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 heavy, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like getting into real estate and going straight into commercial, like going straight into buying apartment buildings. Well, not without having the capital for it. Yeah, real. exactly. <laughs> what do you think is more important if you had to pick one, marketing or sales? Like in general? Yeah, if you had to pick one. The only reason I'm asked because this was a question that was asked to me, and I was like, ooh, that's a, what, so what you think? Marketing or sales? What do you mean by sales? Like, like just the clothes, like, you know, being on the phone, actually close and knowing how to sell, how the conversations to get this person to actually buy or market and have it blow up and get in front of I think of marketing is way more important. <laughs> way more important? Marketing is way Ooh, more important. It, if say anyone that? says sales, I don't know what y'all <laughs> talking about. Okay, break it down, break it marketing, down. So I'll break it down in my business, right? So my business is a $10 million plus business because of the marketing. The marketing is amazing. The marketing is great. We bring in a lot of traffic. Me, I'm not good at sales. Really? I'm not a closer. Like, bro, I'm an introvert. You know, I've trained myself to be able to get on podcasts like this and, like, talk to people. But truly, like, the, the young will, like, I was always a shy person. I don't like getting on the phone with people. Like, I'm not really good at closing. Like, I can't really sell you for... Mm, that's interesting. Yeah, like, I don't really like charging people over the phone. I'm not good at, at sales. But... Because I can get a lot of eyeballs, because I can get a lot of people interested in my product, when they come in, I have closers, I have salespeople on my team that can finish the job. But if you're not good at marketing, your closers, they're, they're going to be hungry. They're not going to be able to pay their bills. So marketing is what pays the bills. Sales, you don't have to be good at sales because you can always hire someone that's commission-based to do the sales for you. Right. Absolutely. So that's why I think marketing is more important. No. There are a lot of businesses right now that have closers and salespeople that are leaving every single day because their pipeline isn't full, because they're not getting leads, <laughs> that's because facts. the company's not good at marketing. <laughs> that's facts. So that's fact. I love the way you break it down. I agree with you. I think marketing is more important too, especially in this social media age, because yeah. if you could get the attention and you got a good enough product. You don't really got to worry about the closing part that because your product gonna close itself. Exactly, and that and you really only need closers and salespeople if you're like selling something like high ticket high over ticket. the phone. But if you're we're talking about e-commerce physical products, all you need to be good at is marketing. If you're good at marketing, people come to your website and they buy. Mm. You don't have to sell the the marketing is is really the sales. It's it's, it's both. That's the, that's the, that's true, bro. What um I was gonna ask you regarding marketing. What is your Number one lesson, if you mind sharing this, that you learned about marketing over this oh, marketing over this time period. 
the best marketing lesson I've ever learned. Mm -hmm. I'll give you two gems. Okay. So from running my business, the best, the best thing that I've ever learned when it comes to marketing is you don't have to be a marketing wizard to make a lot of money because there are already people out there that are great at marketing. If you just study, like, let, <laughs> like let's say, for example, I'm in the e-commerce industry, right? There's already ads out there that are getting millions of views. So let, let me speak from like a, a course perspective. If I'm trying to grow my program or my course, there are already people out there that have millions and millions of students or they're making millions of dollars and they have successful advertisements. They have successful videos and you can just go and remake those videos and you will see similar results. You don't have to like, we're not, we're in, we're in the world where you can copy and paste and boom, build a business. Someone can have a successful cleaning company. You can literally do exactly what they're doing. <laughs> copy their marketing, copy, paste, boom, you're making six figures. Yeah, because there's enough people in the world for you to make money. <laughs> yeah, we're in a copy, paste uh, era right now. So marketing doesn't have to be hard. I think what marketing really is, is just being, being aware in, of who the, the sharks in your industry are. If you know who the top dogs in your industry are and you just mimic them and just add your little sauce to it, you'll be good. But if you That's don't facts. know, if you, if you don't know who the top dogs are and you're just over here creating, create not, not really knowing like what you're doing, then yeah, it's going to be hard for you. But as long as you know who the number one and the number two and the number three in your industry is, you're, you're going to be able to creep your way up there because what they're doing is working and why won't it work for you if you're selling the same product essentially? So that's gem number one. And then I would say gem number two, actually, really, yeah, that's, this, I said both gems. In that <laughs> Just don't reinvent the wheel and mm -hmm. figure out who the top dogs in your industry are, and you'll be good when it comes to marketing. But heavy, bro. Again, once again, let me, let me ask you this. And the reason I'm asking this question is because I was having a conversation about, um, with someone else about, like, experience success at a young age and sometimes the outside world they see it as your world is perfect you got no problems and it's like they don't they don't even ask you like how you doing for right. it's really just like they're coming to you they want some game they want they, they want some information they would they, they're trying to do a new deal with you it's always like business 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 it's never like no real personable shit like that so i want to ask you like if there has been any challenge what's the toughest challenges with being a successful young millionaire I think uh, the, the toughest challenge is, is kind of what you said. A lot of people always think that, you know, life is going smooth. But, um, you know, I have my ups and downs. And there's always times when um, I feel like there's always times where, where people are asking me for help. And I always have to provide in a way because I feel like <laughs> you like either, obligated to. In a way. Yeah, like if someone, if someone <laughs> asked me for money or something, for me to say no, I don't got it. It's they, like, I, I feel guilty. <laughs> I feel guilty saying I don't got it. And they know you got it. Yeah, That's so it's mean. like, I, I feel like you have to hold yourself to a different standard. Yeah. Um, and you also have to, I don't know, it's, it's, it's weird, man. It's weird, especially if you're on social media like me. It would be different if I was if I wasn't on social media. Right. I think that's the con of social media. It is. It is. Because I could be doing what I'm doing now, like on Amazon, Shopify, and not be on social at all. And I probably wouldn't have the problems of every single week, you know, friends, family, et cetera, are hitting me up, bringing their problems to me. Yep. Um, but because I'm on social and always talking about money and things like that, you know, that's, it's, it's going to happen. So. And, and then when you, when you in that position and when you say no, it's like people looked at you as a fucked up person. That's why sometimes I learned that, and it might sound messed up or crazy to some people, but when you on social media and you brand, you got success, it's like it's mandatory that you have to limit access to, uh, like, with yourself because people will run you dry. They're one that will dry, like, with no, like, sympathy or remorse. They'll just keep coming to you, keep coming to you. It's <laughs> yeah. like, damn, like, y'all going to run. Like, who am I going to be able to go to if something was crazy? So you have yeah. to kind of limit people's access to you so they don't, like, um, so they like you, you got to have a boundary. You got to set boundaries so people yeah. don't like run you dry for real because they'll do it. Yeah, and especially like if you're if you're doing the favors, a lot of times people 
won't see that as a one-time thing. <laughs> it's a recurring. You, Man. You, you just became a recurring customer. That's, that's it. Bro, you say you say yes once, you could pretty much book it. Because the yeah. they're gonna everybody's life. Everybody we have problems continuously. They're gonna have another problem and they're gonna come back to you again. Yeah. That's what I learned. Like I remember somebody told me they said the most powerful word that an entrepreneur can say is no. Yeah. <laughs> it was like it's hard to say it, but a lot of times you gotta say it because if you don't, now you open up the Pandora's box or they gonna come to you with every single problem they got. Yeah, and I think the thing with me is like, I genuinely want to see everyone exactly, do well. Exactly. But I know for a fact, <laughs> me, to me, just giving you money, you're gonna be in the same exact spot. That it you. don't help. Yeah, I, w- I would rather just put you on game to something, or, or, I would rather you ask me like, what would you do in this situation, and me really give you like advice that could help you in your life, rather than me give you a short time fix that I know for a fact isn't gonna help you long term. You know. It's not about the money for me. It's more so I'm giving you this money and I know for a fact that you're that you're still not going to be in a good spot like shortly after this. Mm, that's heavy, man. I only got a couple more questions for you. One is, what is your biggest regret since you've been a, since you've been an entrepreneur? I think my biggest regret is probably not thinking big enough and not mm. not thinking big enough and also not aspiring to be like people that are that are way bigger than me. Um, And and I'll put it this way. It goes back to exposure, right? Uh, I made my first $100,000 at 19. And although that's a big milestone, it's a lot of money to make at that age. I feel like I only made that amount of money because I was seeing people on social media that were making $100,000 at that age. But if I was looking at or if I was doing my own research and seeing people that were buying apartment buildings at that age, I feel like I could have done the same thing right. because you're always going to be limited to what you're exposed to. Absolutely. So it goes back to me exposing my little brothers now on all these things that I'm doing and all the things that you know I'm buying, et cetera, because I know the more you expose someone, the, the more likely it is that they can accomplish those types of things. So I would have just introduced myself and done research on, on more wealthier, powerful people early on because I think that would have increased my goals and what I've done so far. Mm, that's, that's heavy, bro. And I also want to ask, uh, for somebody that's listening or watching this, right, and they're in a position where they may have a felony or just call right. a felony or something like that, and they're like, man, this is so inspiring, but I don't know if I can do this. Like, I feel like I, got, I only could get bullshit jobs. I can't yeah. get no money like this. What's your best piece of uh, words of wisdom or actionable advice you can give them so they could get their that 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 journey on the right on the right path. Yeah, man. I mean, number one is you just gotta you gotta get around other people that that have that dog in them, you know. So <laughs> I would say like <laughs> that's facts. You gotta go. T- so what I did, um, what I did when I was getting into entrepreneurship is I didn't have a lot of friends that were trying to learn how to make money in untraditional ways either. All of my friends were kind of on that same pathway of you know I'm gonna go to school four years, I'm gonna get a job, etc. And me, I was more so for some reason, I was just in grind mode, like I need to get this right now. But I didn't have other people that were on the same type of time around me. So it was kind of hard hanging out with my friends and we were conflicted with different like values and goals. So you want to get around people that you can talk to about your goals and that can actually put you on game. You can put them on game. You want to get in that environment. Um, That's why masterminds are so powerful. And you may not have enough money right now to invest into a mastermind. But I guarantee you that in your local area, someone is throwing networking events or you might be have you might have to be the one to throw one um, because I guarantee you that there's people out there that will attend one if someone comes in charge and actually hosts one. Right. So what I did is I went on meetup.com and meetup.com, they have uh, networking events on there, every city, every state. And you can just type in like entrepreneurship and all of the events and meetups will pop up. And I suggest you just attend one and start meeting people that are also trying to do like great things in life business wise. And you never know, you know, you might meet your next business partner there or just someone that you can talk to on a daily basis about your goals. And that's definitely going to get you closer to like your goals. Mm, for absolutely. Sure. You think entrepreneurship is a lonely road? Uh, I think it, it can be, but it doesn't have to be. Mm. Um, especially if you have friends and, and people around you that are on the same mission. I feel like there will be times though, when it gets lonely, it's just like how people are, are in relationships and sometimes they feel lonely too because you're, you're still going to be fighting your own battles at the end of the day. Absolutely. Um, even if you have a partner. But um, yeah. Mm, that's heavy, bro. And this is my final question I got for you. What's your, because you, this is something that people always ask and want to know and shit. Where they, when they, when they want to uh, like learn things that you learn, they say, what's the books you read? So name your top 
three books. Top three books, I would say <clears throat> um, The One Thing by Gary Keller is a book that I read that changed my life and helped me with like focus and just being able to have clarity in my business. So that's a great book to read. Um, the first book that I ever read was Rich Dad, Poor Dad, <laughs> and that completely changed my mindset. Me too, bro. Yeah, that was the first book I ever read, and I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. It clicks instantly. Once, <laughs> once, you, once you read it, it just instantly clicks. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the one thing, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, was a good one, and I think Think and Grow Rich is a great one too mm -hmm. because it teaches you how to think. And like I said, the mindset shift has to come before the income shift. You have to really think differently for you to even make money because if you're stuck – and like a poverty mindset, if yeah. you're stuck in a mindset where you think you have to trade your time for it, for money, then it is going to be hard for you to put in like those 10 hour days when you're not making any money, but you're doing it for like what the future holds for mm. you. So. Right. You, like you truly, I always say this, like you truly have to be a millionaire long before a million is in your bank account. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like some people don't truly understand what I mean by that, but you just broke that down. Like yeah. you have to, you have to have that mindset. And the way you get that mindset, if you're not a millionaire, is you figure out who are millionaires. Yeah, because if you don't have that mindset, like, you have to slick be a little crazy. No, you do. You slick have to be a little crazy to be and like, delusional. You know, yeah, to be like, yo, I'm going to work on this every single day for 10, 15, 20 hours a day. Sometimes I won't even sleep. And even though I'm making no money right now, I'm going to consistently do it because I know in the future it's going to pay off big time. You no got to have some conviction to do that. You, you, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> my bad. I got, this was my final question. I got, if you mind sharing this, because people always, this, people always want to know the money shit. What's the most you ever made in a day? And how did you do it? Yeah. So the most, the most I ever made in a day was around $330,000. <laughs> yeah. So the most I ever made in a day, yeah, was like $330,000. I did it. Um, through a webinar. So I host a webinar every single Sunday where I teach people how to make money online. So if you're watching this and you want to make money on Shopify or Amazon, I highly encourage you to attend. The reason why my brand has blown up so much is because my free workshops that I host on Sundays are better than 99% of the paid courses out there. There are people that are making, it. yeah, there are people that are making six figures right now just off the free information. I believe it, bro. So because I host these workshops every Sunday, a lot of people attend. So, like, I get anywhere between, like, 2,000 to 4,000 people every Sunday to attend this workshop. And at the end of the workshop, I give people the opportunity to get into my program. So, I have a program called Ecom Degree University. We're the only e-commerce program out there that teaches Shopify and Amazon under one umbrella. And that has thousands of people successful in both business models, right? So, at the end, I basically just tell people, look... If you want results faster, if you want like accountability, like be able to get on live calls every single week with my team, and you want to be able to learn both of these business models the fastest way possible, this is this is something for you. And then on on this specific day, it was it was in January of this year, we did like three hundred and thirty thousand dollars in sales. And this is a cool. fifteen hundred dollar program, so like over a hundred something people, people bought it. it. Yeah, that's horrible, and I and I know it's valuable because like I said in the beginning, I got a cousin and he's not even. In the social media world, he don't give a shit about none of that. Yeah. He told me first, he said, no, nah, bro, he 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 got me right. It's a whole bunch of value. I said, oh, I, I already say less. I already know what's going on. Yeah. So, but I, I know firsthand. So, if y'all watching and listening to this, make sure y'all tap in. I'm going to put the link to that in the uh, podcast show notes. So, everybody that want to tap in, hit that webinar, use that link right there. And before we wrap up, bro, I want to say I appreciate you taking the time out here to come up and get oh, no this problem. done, man. You came, you came and dropped a lot of gems, a lot of value. They finna, they finna love this and turn up to this episode and right I here. I appreciate you having me, bro. Yeah, definitely, man. But before I let you go, plug in all your stuff where people can follow you, uh, buy product, everything you got. Oh, yeah, for sure. So uh, on Instagram, I'm at Will Change Lives. I only have one account, so make sure you, <laughs> you follow Make sure you follow in the real account. <laughs> It should be at around like 500K uh, followers right now. So if it doesn't have that much, then it's not the real account. On Twitter, it's at the Will Rivera. So I'm mainly on Instagram and Twitter. You can also find me on YouTube. Just search my full name, William Rivera. Um, on all of those uh, socials, I post about making money online, whether that's with Shopify or Amazon or just, you know, marketing in general. But uh, I hope you guys like this episode. Yep. And uh, follow me on the socials if you want to keep up with me. Hey, man, y'all follow me. Y'all tap in with my boy. Y'all see all the dope things, how much game he just he just dropped on here. So y'all definitely check him out and follow him. And then wrapping up, y'all can follow me on all platforms. I'm at Xavier Miller, and I'm at the official Xavier Miller on Instagram. And you can follow me on my on YouTube, 
Twitter, TikTok, Instagram with the Millionaire Mindsets Podcast. And that's all I have for y'all on this episode of the Millionaire Mindsets Podcast. See you guys next episode. Peace. Gotta get your brain right if you're trying to make a million dollars If you ain't gonna do it for yourself, then do it for your mama Only stay surrounded by them people if you know they solid Elevate your hustle up today to double up your profit Trying to learn some game, it's every y'all gon' talk about it No Deanna, speak that shit that everybody vouches Ain't no more excuses valid, get up off the couch and get up in your bag To your bank account, need an accountant